the, the style of, of run plan that we put together. You know, Coach Stoutland does a great job in studying the front and, you know, what. Listen, that's Doug Peterson's uh, press conference, right? Um, and I'm going to talk about some of the stuff Doug is talking about right now because I got to interpret. I have to, like, break that down for y'all. Need to translate that for y'all. Y'all, y'all going to misinterpret it and everything. All right. Um, all right, so obviously um, I called this right here. Um, see, the Eagles are going to win the game. Like I gave my reasons, right? It ain't got nothing to do with the Eagles being better than the Saints at all or even being on the Saints level or anything like that. No, it's circumstantial, right? The Saints were not, are not taking the Eagles serious. They're thinking about the, um, the Chiefs, right? That's just one. And that led to them, like, not even playing Drew Brees. They, like, he could technically play, but, you know, we ain't worried about the Eagles. So, we go ahead with um with Taysom Hill, right? So, Taysom Hill played. Taysom Hill is, is, is not good. It's just not a, not a good quarterback, all right? I told y'all that we would have the better quarterback on the field, Jalen Hurts. And he, he is. He was the better quarterback on the field. I didn't even see the stats, you know what I mean? Um... And that's one thing you got to learn about me. Like, the way I see sports, I see it in a different way. Like, I'm from the I'm from that time, the old school, where we had to say the stats are for losers. You know what I mean? And that doesn't mean, like, um, it isn't good to have stats, to measure how good you are through stats, right? But stats, stats are for losers because, like, people, when you win – you don't really care about the stats as much. You know what I mean? Like, you're, like if you're on a team and you're a player and you're always winning, right, that's more important, really, because that that's really the joy you get out of the game comes through, like, winning, the money, the contracts, all that stuff comes through winning, right? So when you're doing that, um, you're not the one that's just worried about, worried about the stats, right? The one who's worried about the stats, usually the losers, because they need the stats to, to excuse the loss, like, like for example, if LeBron James loses, he say, "Well, I, he, but he scored 45, 15, and, and eight, right? So that way he's not like it's on. It's not on him, right? The loser needs stats. You know what I mean? So those people who don't understand it, they won't understand how well Jalen Hurts played today. Jalen Hurts played his ass off, right? For people who understand like what they're looking at, like um, people." Who some people were gonna go out there and say, well, he just passed um, what seventeen of thirty, right? Uh, his rating was eighty three or eighty six point three, something like that. They're gonna see pass one hundred sixty nine yards, one two hundred yards, right? And that the running game helped them and all that, right? That's that's the narrative some people are gonna push because those people they don't really understand. I don't even think they watch sports long enough to understand what happened. That's why, like I I listen to like on the, on the uh, post game thing, I listen to listen Seth Joyner and um and um and Reed Dittinger. They they're literally the only two guys up there that know what they're talking about. Seriously, you know what I mean, and that's because they. They they're a little older, like they watch football for a lot of years, um, and they they understand the ebbs and flows in games and all that kind of stuff, and like what real what's really happened, right? What really happened is that Jalen Hurts is a guy that the team believes in over Carson Wentz. That's really what's happening at the end of the day, right? This team that that Doug has, he has a tough situation. He has two quarterbacks. He has a team. The young boy's outshining his quarterback, right? And the team knows it. Everybody knows it, right? Okay. That's what happened. Um, they won the game. That's what was going to matter to them, right? They're not going to say, like, the players, like, them guys, the rigor not going to say only had two catches for this. Or Miles not going to play at 100 yards and all that. Let me tell you what happened. The running game. Everything came from Jalen Hurts. First off, the team believed in him. The offense and the defensive players believe in this young boy. They are seeing things in practice that you don't understand. All you have to do is listen to Jalen Mills' interview that he did earlier in the week talking about the upcoming game, and he talked about Jalen Hurts. That's all you got to do is listen to that. Like, you really want to know what I'm talking about, listen to that. Those guys know he's better than Carson Wentz right now. 
they believe like with him they can win. That's why everybody picked their game up. That's why Alshon all of a sudden has a touchdown. That's why Rager had a couple nice plays in the run game and a couple nice catches. Right? That's why Ertz did the one of the probably did the best catch of the day, which was bogusly not given to us that that little catch he did on the side. Ertz ain't been balling like that all year. They believe this ball can play, okay? Right? Now, I'm going to tell you, that's what's going on with the Eagles. Doug, right now, he on, you know, he up there trying to, like, temper it, right? Because Doug got to play this this line, right? You got on one hand, you got Carson Wentz, right, who they invested all this money in and who he established a personal relationship with. Like, when you're a coach, right, you – and you have to coach two people. You got to, like, kind of be, you know, equal with them. You can't just show favoritism like that. You just can't, especially clearly when you got to do, like, hurt so he has to be careful. What's happening right now is that he's going to learn that this bullshit he's trying ain't going to work with the Philly media. The Philly media going to keep asking him about hurts. He won the game and all that. Doug going to keep trying to say, well, he just played okay, this and that. Like, no matter what he does, Doug's not going to say he just played f- fabulous. And I understand he has to do that. And the reason he has to do that is because we have three more games this year. Hurts can go out next week we, and be trash and we can get blown out. Theor- I don't believe that's going to happen, but theoretically that could happen, right? So Doug has to stay that way. Just stay noncommittal, act like it's a week-by-week thing and all that because the Carson thing is very sensitive. You know what I mean? He has to play that thing the right way. That's what's going on. Ourselves at a running back when he was with the New England Patriots, right. then he had him again when he. But just to finish it off, just look at the circumstances in which Jalen Hurts won this game. First, we started off right. Um, I believe that defense got like a, a three and out to start off the game. I told you, Taysom Hill was just trash, right? That's the reason we, we were going to win. He trash. Uh, Doug goes for a critical fourth and two. And that's where he, he messed up right there. And then the midfield start for um, – you had a midfield start for New Orleans, but the Saints missed the field goal, right? Right there, I was messed up with Doug. Like, yo, stop going for these fourth downs in midfield because when you don't get them, right, the Saints get them. I was a little messed up with that right there. But then we had this beautiful long eight-minute drive that took place. That's the type of football I like, that eight-minute drive. And that eight-minute drive was more than just running the ball. Jalen Hurts showed me the type of quarterback that he is and the type of quarterback that I like. Why? Because I look at shit like, like some of y'all look at stuff like, you know, did he have 300 yards, 500 yards and all that? No, I'm looking at how he runs. When it ain't there, he's out. He out. He made that decision real quick, he out. He's always getting positive yards. Let me tell you some of the number one stat today. He ain't got no sacks. Let me say that again. He gave up no sacks. Who's the number one sack quarterback in the league? It's Carson. Jill has got no sacks. Now, I know I realize, like, you know, he can't help it if he's just faster than Carson. I mean, it is what it is, right? But he gave up no sacks. That's the most important stat of the day, right? Because what that did was that gives the offensive line, that helps them feel good, right? They're confident now. They haven't given up. They had a game where they didn't give up no sacks. You understand what I'm saying? Like, when you're when Carson gets sacked, that brings the energy down to the offense. Jalen Hurts wasn't doing that. Their, their morale was good, and they, kept, and they stayed good. Even when things got tight later on because of Doug doing dumb shit like going for fourth downs. Like we, that that little sneak that he did, that 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 was that was that was a little retarded. Like I, I thought Doug Doug has to improve his understanding of the field position game. I don't like his field position game. And it's because of that that guys like Sean Payton are is usually going to beat him. If Sean Payton had a just a half way decent quarterback, he doesn't lose to us. But I'm glad he went with Taysom Hill. If he have went with um uh, Jameis, he probably would have beat us, for real. The reason they lost, they went with Taysom. Taysom Hill is trash. Listen, I've watched enough football. Trust me. When I tell y'all somebody trash, 
they're trash. And when I tell you the Eagles are definitely going to win the game, you need to listen. I called this one. A lot of your favorite people you watch and listen to didn't call this. They don't, they don't watch the game. They don't see the game the way I see it. I've been watching football forever, right? Um, not forever, but early 80. I just put it this way. My favorite player back in the day, my first favorite player ever was Marcus Allen, right? So that lets you know how far back I go, you know what I'm saying, and watching football. And even more than that, like, I study football, you know what I mean? Like, half of these guys I wouldn't even, like, I don't even debate with like that because, like, when I debate, I debate, like, on a different type of level. I, I think about, like, uh, like my man Reed Didinger. Right, so, like for example, um, some buddies I know we were just discussing the Eagles, right? And the discussion came up like, who's the greatest Eagles running back of all time? You know what I mean? And my thing is, I throw names out there like Steve Van Buren. Those are the type of names I throw out there. And then I go based off of like footage I've seen and all of that. Stick what others have said about him. You know, Jim Brown said that Steve Van Buren is the greatest Eagles running back of all time. Right, so to me, all right. Or he said he's the greatest running back to him. He used to believe Steve Van Buren was the best running back. Like, that's the guy he used to watch. You understand what I'm saying? That Jim Brown said that. Jim Brown's definitely the, the, probably the greatest running back of all time, right? He the first GOAT. If, some, if Barry surpassed him, maybe. But he like the first GOAT as far as running backs. He was like the biggest star in the NFL. He was a running back back in those days. You know what I mean? But if you ain't throwing those type of names out there, like, I don't really have time, you know what I mean, to be engaging in debates like that because, you know. Um, at any rate, right, Doug has to play this little this little slick line between, like, not offending Carson, making him feel bad and all. You got to try to keep Carson's spirits up and not over-praise Hurts, right, just in case Hurts ends up messing up next week or the week after. Right, and that's me just putting a good spin on it. That that's what it is. They're not sure about Hurts being a starter yet, but they're considering it. Now you already know how I feel about like if it's that other thing, where the Eagles have their mind made up that Carson Wentz is their quarterback going forward because they gave him the hundred and thirty nine million dollars. I already told y'all if that's the way this organization is going. That this channel will become an anti Jeffrey Lurie channel very quickly. I will be going in on him because the only this, the only reason you should be putting players in the game is because they give you the best chance to win. If you want some other shit, like or because you're getting paid, which I don't care about. But anyway, man, um, Miles Sanders had, had a great game. A couple of things I'm going to just mention. Miles Sanders played a great game, 14 carries, 115. That long run, man. Well, it's a highlight reel. Um, you look at what we overcame, the injuries, man. Like, just look at what Jalen Hurts had to overcome, right? In the beginning, right, we had them shut out in the beginning, um, first half. Excellent play by the defense. Excellent play by the offense. You 17 nothing. You had a hell of a first half. The second first half, Sean Payton, the genius that he is, he makes some adjustments. Peyton and obviously their defensive coordinator, whose name escapes me right now, they made some adjustments. They came back, played better. But also what happened with us in that, that third quarter, Darius Slade and Avante Maddox go out. Those are our two starting cornerbacks. Rodney McLeod goes out. That's our starting uh, safety. Bradley goes down, who was getting some good minutes, our middle, our rookie young middle linebacker. Malik Jackson and Derek Barnett at times I saw were down and hurt. Uh, the best player, the, my player of the game was Josh Sweat. He was a beast. He got him a strip sack. He got him two sacks, a strip sack, a fumble, right? Caused the fumble. Josh Sweat, that's my player of the game. Um, yeah, that's that, that was the other thing that we did to them. First of all, Jason Mills trashed. And secondly, um, something that Andy Reid had, um, used to always say, you know, it was one thing he recognized when he took notes when he was uh, up in Green Bay. He took a lot of notes watching Holmgren and everything. That's the one thing I respect by Andy Reid. He's a note taker and a very serious uh, attention to detail guy, even back when he was a young coach, right? Um, he said that 
one of the determiners for championships, you know, is fourth quarter um, quarterback, like rushing, you know, rushing the quarterback, how many sacks you get. So fourth quarter pressure. Like you have a defense that your defensive line wins in the fourth quarter, you know, you had a good chance of winning. Through, there were throwaways. And that's there what we did. Absolutely. We won in the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter uh, pressures. We won that. Um, anyway, I'm watching Barrett Brooks and, and um, Seth right Joyner. There. Barrett Brooks is up there. So obviously, must be getting paid by Carson. Or he must be Carson's buddy or something. Because uh, his argument is ridiculous. Um, anyway, man, that, 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 that's all I got right there um, for that. I already, I already told y'all. I called it. Um, when I call a game, you need to listen. I've been watching football for a long time. Like I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. You know what I mean? I'm out. Bye.